Hi everyone and welcome to this another short series where we're going to be talking about making a combat scenario. So one of the things that you may see a lot of on YouTube is basically how to do some various mechanics and, and that's about it. But what I really want to show you is how to actually put together a combat scenario that could be reused for later on in the game where you can make more combat scenarios. So we're going to be looking at things like setting up the AI entries, so how they're going to be spawning in, and the sort of flow of that environment and how that space is going to work. So what we're going to do in this first episode is do the groundwork and set it all up. Now I do recommend you follow along as you'll be learning a lot more later on about how to make the actual combat play inside your scene note that we're not going to go into too complex combat mechanics we're going to keep it very very simple using a first person template so don't worry about making anything too complex right now for this we just want to learn about how to actually set up a scenario so we can have enemies spawn in be killed and then once they're all dead it's been then trigger something else to happen and let the player continue on in a level so let's go ahead and start work on our combat scenario so for our combat scenario, we're going to stick with the first person template as we have a gun in here, it's already set up, and it's pretty easy to put in targets that we can shoot with this thing, okay? So first thing we need to do is build a test environment for our combat scenario. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep this room as it is, basically, um, but I'm going to get rid of uh, a few things. Let's get rid of all of the content inside the box of the room. Like this and deleting it. Nope, there you go. And I've got this one. There we go. And part of this is we're going to put in here um, some wall, other walls in here just to give it that sort of space that we typically associate with our level design for our. Uh, combat and it's a good idea to do so when you're building your test environments is to get something that's indicative of what you're likely to see in your game um try not to keep it too generic and try not to be too specific as well let's just change the snap on these things make our lives a little bit easier okay so i'm gonna make my room do something like this i think and we'll raise these two up. <laughs> there we go. And we'll give this a little drop down area so the player can drop into the arena and not uh, get back out. Because what you want to kind of do in your combat scenarios is set it up so the player is forced to enter the room and actually go into that space. If they don't get forced to go into that space, they'll stick by the door and use it as cover and then it just turn into like a, a bottleneck sh cover shooter, which is not the most fun thing in the world. As the player is going to be forced just to stick by the doorway. We want to get them out into the room. Okay, so I'm going to put it up like this. And we'll just increase the height of our walls here to account for that. There we go. Okay, so when the game starts, we're going to have the player drop down into the environment from the starting position here. Okay, and in this environment now, there'll be when we spawn in the enemies, we'll trigger a cutscene, a lock the door, and stop the progress from the player, and they have to uh, fight the enemies encroaching on their position. Now, another way you can also encourage the player to go into the space is to make it so they don't lock the door uh, for the combat until you get to the door. So the player will walk through, get to the exit, and then the door slams shut, and then spawn the enemies in. That way the player's in like the trap, essentially. So think about how you want to encourage the player going into the map, and that would be a good starting point for that. So we're going to move this around up here, and that's going to act as our exit for the map, so to speak. Like that. Okay. Okay, so this is our environment, and we'll make the enemy spawning in a second, but... 
uh, what they first need to do is set up well, how they're going to spawn in. So what is their spawn spawn rules? Okay, and that depends entirely on what type of enemies you're doing. So something like Gears of War, for example, will use emergence holes where enemies will burst out the ground and and spawn in from that way. Others will just drop in from like an aircraft carrier or something. There'll be something considered uh, about their design that will go into deciding where these enemies are coming from. So what we're going to do, we're going to do two approaches. One, we're going to have enemies standing in the room already, and then we'll make them call reinforcements, and those reinforcements are going to come from another locked door. Okay? And that locked door I'm going to put over on this side of things. So we're going to put this over here. And like that. And furthermore, I think what I'm going to do is erase this locked door off the ground and onto some sort of balcony scenario. So enemies will drop in from this new position. <clears throat> Here we are. And that would be the corridor coming from here. And then we'll just do a little balcony section like this. Okay. And so the door would be like something like that. Enemies will spawn in, they'll come through here and then drop down and join the fight. Okay. And the reason I've elevated it is because then I don't have the issue of the player accidentally getting into a place that they can't technically get into. Um, we don't want it to go anywhere. We, this, would want, this would be the extent of it, basically. We don't want to have like a whole other part of the map here. I mean, most of the time you don't. But you've got to think about where your enemy is going to come from. Okay. So we'll do a couple of differences here. So we'll do one that's going to spawn for door doors. We'll do one where they're coming for like a, a helicopter sort of transport. And another one where they're going to come through the ground. And we could even do the last one. They're going to come through bursting through the final door. Left one, locking it and letting us, letting us out. So a few things to approach when it comes to your design for your scenarios. So with that done, let's now walk through the level. Now, I tend to always walk through my block outs just to get a feel for the space and make sure it feels like it will be suitable for what I want to achieve. And this looks open feels OK. I think this will be just fine. I might make this balcony here a little bit wider. And yeah, I like that. Okay, and we can put in some decorative parts in here that the player can then use for strategy, like cover elements, uh, line of sight blockers. So the line of sight blocker, you can use things like columns or pillars in the way. And I think that'll be a good place to put it there. Like that. And we'll put a mirroring one over on this side of the area here. And as for the cover, we'll put in some cover blocks here. And here's a bit of some crates and boxes, which I can reposition however I want. And I'm just going to turn off my snaps um, for especially rotation. That means I can get more natural looking and feeling positions here. And you notice here that the gizmo is still focused on the world coordinates. If I click this little globe icon, it will change it to the local coordinates. This makes moving this in position a lot, lot easier. So I recommend getting familiar with this button and toggling between them. Okay. Okay, so there's our cover. And we can put a double height cover as well. So the player can do something interesting with that, I'm sure. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so... With the setup of the level done, what we're going to be working on now is putting the nav mesh in. So let's go ahead to our plus box up here, volumes, nav mesh, bounds volume. I'm going to drag this in and we want it to cover the area. You can have multiple nav meshes in your game. As long as they connect, the AI should be able to navigate through them. Okay, and if you want to preview it, hit P and you can see what kind of area you are covering. Uh, I'm just going to do this actually. Okay. 
the main thing is I've got navigation mesh up top on this balcony part and obviously underneath it. Now, to get a character to jump from this position up here down to the floor, we need to use something called a nav link. And a nav link allows them to basically bridge two islands of our nav mesh together. So you find that in your uh, place actors quickly add panel. Go down to your volumes, I think it is. No, where is it? All classes. We'll do it here. And just search for nav link proxy. Oh. And the way this works is you see there's two points, and it basically this is your bridge. So as long as they both touch the green, you're good. So I'll move this one down over to here, like this. Now you don't need to have loads of these going along the whole entire edge because there is a radius to them. So don't worry about it too much. Um, but if you wanted to, you could probably put in a couple. Um, just move that over here and put a duplicate that over to here. Okay. And there's our nav link. That's, this will mean that enemies can jump down from the uh from the balcony there onto the ground below. Okay. Okay. Now alongside that, we'll be doing things like explosive barrels and other interactive elements inside the level two. More on that will come later on in the series. But for now, this is where you want to be at, is building out your own little environment. Obviously, it doesn't have to look exactly like this, uh, but do bear in mind about the idea of making the player forced to go into the, the combat area and think about where enemies could be spawning from. And in this example tutorial series, we're going to go through and showcase a couple of variations on that. So hopefully we'll cover all the bases with that there. So there you have it, the first part is done. We've now got our environment set up, we've got the nav link set up. All that's left really to do is now start adding enemies in. And that's what we're gonna do next, is we're gonna make some enemies just run around in our map and look like they're gonna attack us. Now we're not gonna go into a full combat system, we're just gonna make them spawn in, do stuff, and then basically be moving targets for our target dummy uh, shooting. So you can watch the next part right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. If you're watching this and you're not yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever new videos and live streams occur. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.